Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back broadcasting live from the Las Vegas Convention Center here at CES 2019. We are winding down our day with education, and we're going we're gonna to go towards a program that delves into portraits and weddings and, and just something about your business and being consistent. Um, the photographer I'm about to introduce is a top 100 Nikon winner, and... She runs a business out of the East Coast. She shoots weddings, and she was just up on our panel a few minutes before. Let me introduce to the Nikon Theater stage, Kaya Marie Stone. Hey, woo. <laughs> a hug again? <laughs> oh, my mic sounds better this time. Hi, guys. So, having fun out here at CES. Um, so, what I'm going to talk about is just being consistent. This is something I struggled with when I first started shooting, because my pictures were just everywhere. I didn't really have a style. I knew that I wanted to have bright, light, airy, um, just overall joyful images, but I could never create it. And it really was because um, I wasn't using my resources or the light that was available or I was switching out my lenses too much. So what I started doing as I started arriving to my clients was I would gather their details, because I'm a wedding photographer, so my couples always have out wedding rings, invitations, um, there's something borrowed, there's something blue. I would gather all these things up, and I would start to find available light. If I didn't have available light, I absolutely would pop my flash on. But the first thing I had to think about was what was my light source. And then another thing that I wanted to do, just to try to continue to be consistent, was shoot my details <laughs> with the same lens. So every time I arrived to my couples, I always use my um, 35 millimeter lens. I always set it at the same aperture, 4.0. Because I know that my details are going to be all laid out and I want to get a great picture of all of them. Shoes, rings, these are all things that are so important to my couples when I give them back their stuff. But I am going to do the same exact thing at every wedding. I'm going to arrive, I'm going to gather their stuff, I'm going to find available light, or I'm going to use my flash. I'm going to shoot a 4.0 with my 35 millimeter lens and I'm going to go to town on these details. Using the same lens and the same f-stop for me was what started to make my images look more consistent. When I start to mentor people and I see that they're constantly changing their lens, or they're running, running from one side of the room to the other, or you know, they're changing all their settings all the time, this is what uh, gives us that different look in our photos. But we, we don't want that. We want to have consistency because our huge goal is to establish a style. And you want people to recognize your images. You want people to say, hey, look at that picture. That's a Kaya Marie picture, or my company's actually KSS Photography. You want people to be able to see that and say, those are her images. So just changing out things, lenses, moving all around, um, trying different lighting scenarios, it's really going to affect you negatively. So as I arrive, I do the details. When I start to shoot with my couples, whether it's same sex or um, you know, a bride and a groom, I do the same thing with my light. Again, I do the same thing with my lens. So I swap it out for either my 85 or my 50, and those are my two that I use just for shooting people, and I'm always, always, always backlighting them. So for details, it's window light or my flash. As soon as I get outside, it's backlight. Sometimes I luck out and I have overcast light, which is beautiful, and I don't have to worry about it. But for the most part, I always, 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 let me go back to that one. I always, always, always try to keep the light to my subjects back. But what's going to give me that consistent look at my images is me shooting at the same f-stop with the same lens and I really don't vary on my shutter speed. I usually am at about 200. 
And my ISO, if I'm not using flash, is around 1,000. And I'm telling you, I do the same thing every single time I shoot because I want to have a consistent look to all of my images. I meter for the shadows, which means that I find the darkest part of my client, and then I meter for that. So what happens is it creates a bright image completely around. Because that's the look that I want. Because when I establish my look, I'm ultimately establishing my brand. I want clients that want these type of images to hire me. Because I want to I wanna show what I want to shoot. So if I have clients that are coming to me and say, oh, we're wearing flower crowns, that's my ideal client. Or, oh, we're getting married on a farm. That's my ideal client. So I always, always, always try to stay consistent with everything that I'm producing. I don't care about things like clouds. Um, they're not important for my images. I really don't care about architecture too much. I really am just looking at the beauty. My brides always have a beautiful glow. That's something that I can't create if I'm shooting with a 14 to 24 wide lens or a 16 to 35. I have to be able to shoot them close up with a lens that has a pretty wide aperture and I can open up to. So I'm always going to stay with that 85. I'm always going to stay with that 50. And I'm going to stay at about 2.8, 3.2, or 3.5. Because it's really just about the beauty of the image. There's not anything else that I really want to capture. Yeah, I might get everything that's in the background, but my main focus is just always, always, always going to be my subject. But what I'm doing when I'm thinking about things and I'm shooting with the same equipment, backlighting the same way, I'm creating an overall consistent look to all of my photos. They're all bright. They're all joyful. They're all happy. There's no shadows. There's no contrast. There's no deep saturation. And that's because I overexpose a little bit. But it's really my lens choice. It's the way that I've backlit them. It's how close I get into them. I care about their connection. I care that they love each other. I care that she has blush flowers. I care that there's, I think they were llamas. <laughs> in the background, but I don't care about them that much because my overall focal point is my couples. Now, sometimes we have harsh days where we're shooting at 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, but if you are backlighting, you're going to consistently get the same look. So you literally just have to put the sun to your client's backs. It's, it's in front of your lens, and sometimes you might get a little bit of a flare, you can throw on your lens hood. You can use your hand as a hood. But if you keep the sun to their backs, you're going to always get that dreamy, well-lit, just beautiful, overall happy image. And that's my style. So as I knew I wanted to develop my style, it was making a brand for me. KSS was becoming a brand. So Brides and grooms knew, oh, if you want light and airy images, you're going to call KSS. You're going to hire KSS, which is Kai and Marie, which is me. And then what happened was all of my clients who came to me were all the same. They were happy. They were in love. They were joyful because I was attracting the type of people that I wanted to be around. And that's ultimately what you want to do with your brand. So if you think about, like, if you want a good cheeseburger, Quick, where do you go? McDonald's. You want a good cup of coffee? Quick, where do you go? Starbucks. Why? Because we know that brand, and we know what that brand's going to produce. So if you know that you want a dreamy image that's full of happiness, that's got light, soft backgrounds, you're going to come to me to hire me to do that. And it doesn't really matter for me whether it's natural light or if it's like an on-camera flash. I don't. I don't care you know, what my light source is. People think, um, just because of the overall look of my images, that they're all natural light. They're not. You cannot be a wedding photographer and have available light all the time. It's not possible, especially in New Jersey. It rains 
all the time, right, Brandon? We get rain all the time. So you have to ultimately learn light sources. If you don't have available light, you use on-camera flash. But even if I am using my speed light, I'm still lighting them the same. For me to get an overall bright image, I'm overexposing. So it's a little trick I use on my flash. I just dial up the exposure a little bit. Or you can just up your ISO. You can slow down your shutter. But whether you're indoors or you're outdoors, for me, I want to make sure that my images are consistent. It's not clicking. Do I point it here or point it here? <laughs> um, same thing. Again, you would think this is an outdoor image, but it's not. We're inside. I have really pretty light coming in from the windows. So if I did backlight them, but they're in front of me with my on-camera speed light. Honestly, it was pretty dark in here. Um, but I'm just tricking my flash a little bit, upping the exposure. Because again, when I'm metering, I'm using the darkest part of all of the girls, which would be in here. So once I, it tells me my in-camera, if you look in your in-camera meter, it tells me what I should set my settings to. I make it a little bit higher, and I overexpose. I love this picture. <laughs> so um, besides the fact that they're backlit, it's a nice sunny day, all the colors are pretty, it's just me showing you guys that I'm just consistently doing the same thing. So with my bridal parties, I have on my 35 millimeter. 24 to 70 is also a good lens. I'm at 4.0 for them. And I'm just shooting the same exact way. If it was just these two, it would be the same thing. I really, really, really don't move my subjects too much. I feel like if you just move them too much or you're changing lenses too much, you're not going to get that consistent look because you're just kind of all over the place and you're, you're doing too much and you're stressed out and you're trying to figure out how to do this. If you make things easy and you make things simple and you do the same exact thing every single time, you can do it with your eyes closed. So the picture that was before, this is the same exact to the T location as this. I saw that I had perfect light. I had diffuse light coming from the front because it was a light, concreted area. And what I did was I just added the bridal party members in because I already have a good location with good light. My lens is on that I love. My settings are great that I love. So there's no reason that I need to move. I'm just going to add people in and take people away just to make it easy for me. And I'm consistent with everything that I did. This, was a, this is a great image. <laughs> so every way I turn these girls, the sun was just completely hitting them so harshly. So I kind of just diagonal moved them around. Um, and I had the same thing. I just had the light kind of off to the side, so they were semi-backlit. But again, I'm using the same lens, 35, 4.0. And it was like 1 o'clock in the afternoon. But do you see as I go through all my pictures? They're all the same. I never, ever, ever, ever stray from things. I do not. I, how many of you guys shoot weddings? It's hard. And I don't want to make things harder for myself. So when I found a system that worked, I really just stuck with it. So what works for me is just keeping everything the same. I literally have my bags with my kit lenses. One bag is for when I shoot my couples. One bag is for details and reception. I have in my couples the 35, the 50, the 85. And then when I'm doing details and the reception, I have my 24 to 70 and 105. But I know at each part of the day, those are the lenses that I'm going to choose because those are the lenses that are going to give me that overall look that I want. You will never see me at a wedding. And I'm not knocking anyone that does this. You can, you can absolutely do it. But I don't like to change my lens too much. <laughs> um, some people use two bodies. When I wear that thing, I knock into things. I get caught on things. So I just use one camera, and I try to stick with one lens, and I just read my light. I love this one, too. So on my girls, beautifully black, backlit. And as I go through these, 
You see how the clients that come to me all have the same colors? Same color dresses, pastels. Same color flowers, pastels. Blushes, pinks. They come to me because they know that I consistently produce this type of work. They know on my Instagram, they see my images in my little squares that all look the same. They know that they see all of their friends and their new spouse looking happy and in love. And they are connecting with these images because everything that I do, no matter where I have, wherever I am, Christmas, this was a Christmas wedding, this was in August, May, you, you can't tell what time of year it is or, or what venue I'm at or you can't tell any of that because I'm consistently doing the same exact thing, which means my body of work overall looks the same. And that's how you build your brand. You want to be consistent. You want to be intentional. You want to think about, okay, today I'm going into this wedding. She only has seven girls. For me, I'd rather her have eight. But it doesn't matter whether she's symmetrically together and has the exact amount that I want. I'm going to shoot them the same, same lighting scenario, same lens, same f-stop, same shutter speed, backlit. That's indoors. That's at a reception. OK. So I've shot their wedding. I've given them a great experience. I love weddings. I come home, it's like a rush. Um, but I have to keep continuing to make my brand flow. So after I leave their wedding and I say goodbye and I wish them the best on their honeymoon, I tell them, don't make any babies. The client experience doesn't stop there. And this is where you guys really need to hone in on building a brand, not just with your images, but just with you, because you're, you're, you're your brand at the end of the day. So what I do the very next day after the wedding is I give my clients 100 teaser photos. I want them to post my pictures. I don't want them to post Uncle Bob's pictures or Aunt Shirley's pictures, or the pictures from their 11-year-old cousin that she shot on her iPhone. I want them to post my pictures. So I pick about 15-ish um, that I absolutely love. In my Lightroom program, there is a grid module. In the, there's a grid option in the print module. And I make them little grids, and I text it to them. And these make amazing Instagram stories. So when I text these over to my clients, they post them on their Instagram, not only just on their feed, but on their stories. And then what that means is, here my brand is continuing on. Call Kai and Marie because not only does she shoot amazing photos, she's sweet. We had fun, but holy crap, she gave me 100 pictures the next day. And I have pictures now for my story, my Facebook. I can change my profile picture. I can change my default picture. I'm also going to take these pictures, and I'm going to send them to whoever baked this cake, because I give my clients a questionnaire. And I ask them, who is your florist? Who is your baker? Um, who was your wedding planner? Who did your love notes for your vows? And I'm going to tag everybody. And when they post them, they tag them too. So ultimately, that all will lead back to me. This is the venue. I give Instagram stories. So this venue is by my house. I really want it to be on their preferred vendors list. So every time I had a couple at this venue, I legitimately gave them teasers that night. Because the next day, they're tagging the venue. So what happened is this venue called me up. Now, this is a very upscale venue in New Jersey. I'm now on their preferred photography list. So when they get new clients that come in, they're sending those clients to me as the house photographer. And that's because everyone knows that my brand 
is consistent, reliable, happy, joyful, bright, professional, and it's immediate. And we live in a time where everything is immediate. But that's what I do. I give them their pictures. They post them. Because I do need a little bit of time in between to actually get them back all of the edited photos from me and my second photographer. Um, but I pick pictures that I know they can use. I don't really give them a picture of like the ring bearer or the flowers at the end of the pew in the church. They can't use those images. But I give them pictures of themselves, him loving on her. Like, I mean, if you have a significant other, how cute is it when they just snuggle into you and kiss you? And that's, that's going to be her Facebook profile picture. And probably that could be like her Instagram. So I'm thinking always in terms of how can I make my brand continue on even after I give them their, even after I shoot the wedding. So I was just showing you guys, my colors are consistent. Um, the way that I send off the teasers are consistent. None of my couples are treated different. They're all treated the same. They all get the same type of love. They all get the same type of happy, joyful images. And they all get everything that will build back to my brand. And it's just because I'm consistent. I don't treat one couple different than the other, like, oh, let's give Friday's couple teasers, but not Saturday's couple, because we're exhausted on Sunday. Friday's couple get teasers on Saturday. Saturday's couple get teasers on Sunday, so on and so forth. I'm running out of time. <laughs> so. We talked about this a little bit in my panel. If you really want to get into weddings and you're not getting the, those type of clients yet, because you're not there that, yet, and it, it's, it's not anything to be ashamed of. We all have to work up our portfolio. We have to put that legwork in before we can command the big prices. So what I do is I do styled shoots. Does anyone know what styled shoots are? Have you heard of them? No? <laughs> It's just basically where you're putting together your own shoot. So if you know you want to be a light and airy photographer, you're going to put together a shoot with a groom in a white tux, a bride in a white gown, flowers for her bouquet that are light pastels, greeneries, blushes. And you're going to set up a shoot. You're going to take all those images. You're going to overexpose them. And then you're going to shoot them. Capture, I should say capture. Capture those photos. And then what's going to happen is you're going to have your own content to post and your own content to put out there. You don't have to wait for the ideal client. You're going to put it out there and start reeling them in. Like, hey, look what I can do. If you know that you want to be a more um, artistic photographer or you want to shoot families, you're going to put together a styled shoot. Ask your best friend if she has kids or he has kids. Hey, do you guys want a family shoot? Put together a shoot for them. Post those photos because you're going to get back what you put out there. So you have to show what you want to shoot. But literally, if you're not getting those clients, bring them in yourself. Um, so I do styled shoots. I'm actually going to show it next. I'll put it up. I'll put this up here for right now. And sometimes I invite other photographers in my community, because I'm a giver and I love people. Um, and they join me, and I get my couples to model for me. I get um, tuxedo places, uh, bridal boutiques, florists, calligraphers, invitation people, cakes. I get everybody on board. We all do a styled shoot together. I absolutely will give them all the images that I shoot so that they have stuff to post on their social media accounts as well. But we get together, we do them, they're fun, and then everybody has a ton of images to post. So I was actually a little nervous about showing this because this is my first time doing a video. <laughs> Let's see if it goes. Just watch me now. So this just is my last me. style shoot that I just did just in November. Just watch me. Do watch me now. Just watch me. Just watch me now. Just watch me. Hey. I got the sun shining on my soul. Electric current down in my bone. So amazing. Got me shaking. Pay 
Perfect. So that was, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so that was my couples. Those are all couples of my KSS photography. I had them get in. I, I fitted them. I'm not just going to say just get in something. I had them get in dresses, get in tuxes. And I orchestrated that shoot with my vision. And I have it all over my Instagram. Because right now in New Jersey, January, February, March, it's cold. There's, I have nothing to put out there in the social media world. I have no content to post. But I have a brand, and my brand has to still continue. So that's why I do styled shoots. That one was in November. My next one is in February um, during WPPI week. Can't wait. <laughs> um, but that's what I do because, and, and another thing too is that it allows you to be creative, right? Because sometimes we get these clients and we don't necessarily love what they show up to our shoots wearing, or um, they bring their pets and the pets are unruly, or it's a family session and the kids are unruly. But if you put together your own shoot, you're in charge of everything. There doesn't have to be any kids. There doesn't have to be any pets. Um, and you are picking everything, the colors, the theme, the location. Um, and you have total control over it. And then what happens is after you edit everything, you're handing it off. People are putting it on their social media. They're tagging you. Now your word of mouth is not just in the social world because most of those vendors are with me on site. So now they're talking about me to their other vendor friends. Sometimes those vendors are getting married. So it's really just a trickle effect. Um, but they can be a little bit expensive. I'm not going to say go out and do a style shoot tomorrow. But try and find people that will donate their time. There's always, always, always tons of people. Or if you have other couples that are like so good looking, or you have friends that are good looking, say, hey, do you want to model for me? Nine times out of 10, they'll say yes. So I'm actually running out of time. <laughs> I can stay up here and talk all day. Um, I know they haven't really been asking questions. Christy, did you ask questions or no? Does anyone have any questions that I can answer? Oh, yeah, sure. I do. I, I actually, makeup artists will contact me on Instagram and say, hey, I saw you did, did a styled shoot. Um, can I be on your next one? Yeah, so Instagram is like probably the place I find everyone. But yeah, and usually the makeup artist will know a hairstylist. Yeah, so then now you've killed two birds with one stone. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? Uh, Uh, she said congratulations on my engagement. <laughs> so after shooting, I don't even know how many weddings I'm finally engaged myself. Actually, Christy is engaged too. Um, but yeah, guys, I'm going to get off. But what I want to tell you is if you really want to get into this, it doesn't even have to be weddings. It could just be photography. You guys have to be kind. You have to be patient. You have to put the work in. You cannot walk into this world and think you're going to make $10,000 per shoot and you've only shot one or two things. You have to practice. Learn your equipment. Do you have to go to school for it? Absolutely not. I did not go to school for photography. I am self-taught. That means I messed up a lot of stuff a lot of times. But messing up those things just made me better in the long run. And you have to be available. Because right now, we live in a society where everything is immediate. So if somebody sends you a message on your Instagram DM, direct message, answer it. Don't go food shopping or to the mall or to get your nails done or go get an oil change. Answer it. Whenever you get an inquiry, answer it. Because if you do not do that, they're on to the next person in their feed. But 
most importantly, and I probably already said that, you guys have to be kind because people love kind people and people love happy people. And that's it. I have to get off because it's my time. <laughs> but thank you guys. Ladies and gentlemen.